It's Tuesday, January 30th. I'm Scott. And I'm Rim. And this is Geek Night. Tonight we review WarioWare Smooth Moves. It's a wee Wario. Let's do this. Well, I dutifully did my civic duty and reported to jury duty today. Did you do any jurying? Um, How about any nullifying? Well, you see, it was... Not as painful as I expected. I'll tell the whole story uh, Thursday when we talk about jury duty. Is that what we're talking about Thursday? Because they never had jury duty. I don't know if it's a good for a whole show if I've never... Uh... I've got quite a bit to say about how jury duty went. Okay. And it's not over yet. You see, the trials that came up were large, long trials. Uh, so you didn't get to go to the nice traffic court. You had to go to the serious criminal bad thing court. So what uh, what ended up happening was you know they have a thing where hey if you this would be a hardship to you fill out this form uh, sign a statement swearing that it'll be a hardship and we'll figure something out. So I told them what my job is, and they said oh you can go home. Oh all right what time was that? Uh, well they might make me come back not tomorrow but maybe Thursday for so like a quick. You're gonna go to work tomorrow? Yep I'm gonna go to work tomorrow and I we'll see but theoretically. Just because of the line of work I'm in, I can't be called up for jury duty. Oh, that's good. And apparently, even if I don't have to go in the rest of the week, I'm ineligible for jury duty for another six years from this point. Oh, six years is pretty good. Watch, six years from now, like immediately, jury duty. And if I'm still an IT worker in hospitals, I probably just won't get to serve on a jury again. Yeah, but if you're doing that in six years, I don't know. Is that what you want to be doing in six years? Hey, if I'm the boss... Uh, if you're the boss, that's cool. Then yeah, I could deal with. Being but if you've the still boss. got your same job in six years, it's no good. I probably won't have my same job in a year and a half. <laughs> I might not have my same job in weeks. Yeah, aren't you interviewing with Google? No, I'll, yeah, barely. You're talking to a Google guy. Oh, uh, it's this one person from Google who seems that it seems like this is person at Google, and their job is to go around the internet. Right, finding people who might be able to work at Google who haven't applied to work at Google. Uh huh. So they look for like they'll go to forums and look for people giving tech advice, or they'll go to uh, they'll look at resumes just posted in places, and they'll look at open source projects and things, and they'll say, "Hey, here's someone. Have they applied to work at Google? They haven't. We should talk to them." Huh. And apparently, she said it's it was like. The subject line of the first email, they send out a form letter because I searched for the form letter and I found this same person sending the same form letter to everyone. She just changes the line that says where she found out about you. Nah. And uh, it was like, Google is impressed with your resume. And it was my old resume. So I sent the new one. Wow, if Google's impressed with your old resume, I should... Well, it's just this one person whose only job it is is to seek out people who haven't applied to Google. I think... You know, of course, they probably hire a few people this way. No, I can tell you what's going on. I see what's going on here. Google is amassing its resume database. Google <laughs> is getting basically dossiers on every single tech worker in the United States and possibly the world. And then when they build Skynet... That's why they want a million... That's why a million people apply to work at Google and only 5,000 actually get hired. When they build Skynet... They know exactly who needs to be on their side or gone. <laughs> it could be. That's all it is. You know it. It's got something to do with it. But no, if she actually wants to talk to me on the phone, then eh. But yeah, I'm talking to other jobs, which are basically the same as my job, only at different places. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I'm pretty much going to go into those like all assish because I'll be like, yeah, what are you going to do for me? That's right. <laughs> I already got a job. You're going to have to offer me some shit. I imagine, because usually when I apply to a job, I never really say, like, I don't demand a salary right away. I usually just say, oh, it's No, I never say, like, a specific salary or anything. Well, I but I rarely, the most I ever did was say, you'd have to pay me at least X. Mm. If I were in your position, I would probably say something like, I need X, Y, and Z, or I, I, or, and if you can't tell me that that is a possibility, there's no point in us continuing. Yeah. Well, you know, I always wait for them to ask, you know, I like because I even like if I just go in and say that and then leave, that's kind of a waste of my time. I'd like to at least, you know, find out about companies and see well, what they're see, doing. What I would probably do is I'd ask ahead of time, you know, before I interview whoever, whatever recruiter I talk to, I just ask him, can this company offer me at minimum the following? Otherwise, we're wasting both of our time. Well, it's not a recruiter. I'm actually talking to someone at the company. Well, and yeah, the I like to go and see what companies are doing. The recruiter at the company. Yeah. I just like to go see what companies are like 
you know, walk around offices. Oh, yeah. But what if you talk to them ahead of time and they say, yeah, regardless, we're not prepared to pay more than $70,000 a year for our position. At that point, you know, if that's the salary you weren't looking for, there's no point in talking to the people at the company. Unless I want to go see what their company's like. Well, why would you want to do that if you already know they're not going to give you the job you want? All corporate espionage. It, 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 what, like- are you, what are you going to do after having seen the inside of some PR or HR guy's office? I like uh, I like offices. Uh huh. <laughs> so you don't like urban exploration or crawling around in subways, yet you like going to generic offices. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I like that's like I like going to Staples. <laughs> what? Why are you looking at me funny? I I, I don't get you sometimes, <laughs> weirdo. You're weird. Anyway, in the news, <laughs> we we gotta talk about gaming for the rest of the show. In the news. There's news on the Wii now. Oh, right, right, right. The, the the news channel on the Wii. Yeah, it came out a day early, which I didn't notice or care. I didn't even know it was coming until like a second before it showed up. And then it was like, oh, there it is. Well, the thing is, right away you notice that, one, it you can't really customize it. Yeah, it's not like the weather channel where you say, all right, that... Oh, you mean the useless weather channel that always tells you the weather at midnight on I, the previous day? I know. Day? The weather channel would be more useful if it would update the weather more often, but it doesn't. So it's, it's not that it updates fr- infrequently. It's that no matter when you look at it, it only ever gives you the temperature for midnight. Yeah, if you're looking for current temperature, the weather thing is no good. It's only good for like the five-day forecast, but if I'm and looking, even then it's kind of eh. See, I only want the Wii to tell me the weather now. If I'm looking for the forecast, I'll be going to NOAA.gov anyway. Yeah, definitely more accurate than the weather that the Wii gets. But the Wii News Channel is basically just the AP wire. Yep, it's just the Associated Press. Every, pretty much almost every story from the Associated Press in the past X period of time, like day or so. And, you know, the only really cool thing about it is you can go around the globe looking at news stories. So, you know, it's like I don't you when I read my Google Reader and my RSS feeds, I'm usually not getting the normal news. So this Wii News makes it pretty easy to read normal news stories. What do you mean the normal news? Like the news that's on TV and in newspapers. Like what? As opposed to on Slashdot and on Dig. See, I read Google News, so I know what the I news is. I also read Google News, but, you know, sometimes it doesn't give you everything. Like what? What doesn't it give you? It only Well, the other thing is my Google News is customized to only give me, like, three stories <laughs> in the, like, national, international news section and only three stories in the national news section. And Well, why don't you just expand that? Because then it it's kind of annoying. Instead, you're going to go to the Wii every day? No, I don't go to the Wii every day. But if, you know, if I'm sitting at the Wii and i got nothing to do, click on News Channel, see what's going on. Nah. Well, I guess part of the problem is I never, it's not like I have idle time ever. It's not like I'm sitting in the living room thinking, what could I do with my free hours? Well, it's like, you know, sometimes you sit down, you want to play a video game, you're not sure which one. While you're thinking about it, you can read a couple news stories. It's actually pretty fun the way you read news on there. It's actually... Like, it's it's decent to read and browse the news on the screen. It's it's a good interface thing. Yeah, though I imagine if we get the Wiimote working exactly the way we want with the Mac, it'll more and more eliminate the need to use the Wii for any of that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. So, check this out. On, I think, next week, or early in February, nah. the first week in February, I'm pretty sure, Diddy Kong Racing DS is coming out. All right, I've never actually played a single uh, Diddy Kong or game or a game that included any of those characters other than Donkey Kong. Yeah, well, Diddy Kong showed up in Donkey Kong Country, remember? I never played those games. Oh, Donkey Kong Country was a good classic SNES game. That was pretty much... That, that. In fact, I remember specifically, that game came out not too long after I had migrated almost entirely to PC gaming. Oh, wow, that was way long ago. I was PC gaming way... I remember when I got Nintendo Power, I still used to think that my PC was a better gaming platform. <laughs> anyway, uh, for the N64, there was a game called Diddy Kong Racing. And, you know, it, it got played up, you know, bigger than anyone expected, but it still wasn't, you know, it wasn't as big a smash as Mario Was that Kart that game 64. with, like, the boat and the airplane? It's actually, when you look at it, with you know, when you take away the fact that the characters are characters that no one knows about because they're Diddy Kong characters as opposed to Mario characters, it's actually a better racing game than Mario Kart 64 ever was. You know, I was always, I, I was skeptical when I first played it for the N64. You know, I'm like, Diddy Kong Racing, give me a break. And then I played it, and I'm like, oh, you can be a plane or a boat and a car and race them all against each other. That and sounds ludicrous. It's a, it's actually really, it works so well because it's even, and it, it's actually a racing game 
even though it has the items, it, it's more of a racing game, whereas Mario Kart is more of a random item crap game. Well, no, Mario Kart for the DS, there's pretty much no randomness in it. There, there is. The, the, mo- the least random Mario Kart is the Game Boy Advance one, but Diddy Kong Racing is actually a really good racing game. The theme of it is just one no one knows about because no one cares about Diddy Kong. Huh. But Diddy Kong Racing DS seems to be everything... Diddy Kong Racing for the 64 was. Well, I want more racing games for my DS. I mean, I like Mario Kart, but it's played out. I, I beat it. I'm done with it. Yep. Uh, the Wi-Fi is well, dead. Yep. But uh, Diddy Kong Racing is going to have one thing that Mario Kart DS uh, and every racing game recently severely lacks, and that is a custom track editor. Uh-huh. Much better than the one in the original Excite Bike. So, wait, can I just... Uh, I mean, basically my dream editor would be... I have a, a palette, a blank thing, and I can just draw a track. That's what you do. God damn. You just take the stylus and you draw, you know, let you draw the track, the shape of it, and then you race on it. And uh-huh. there's a limit to how long the track can be, and you know, you can you might accidentally draw an invalid track and it'll and then it won't let you race it. It's like, no, your track is invalid, fix it. Kinda like the other day when I was at the supermarket self checking out and I signed my name and it sat there for a while hung. And it turned out that it couldn't figure out my signature, and it didn't think that it was a real signature. Wait, but haven't we filled it in before, and it's worked? It depends on uh, where you go. Some, they actually look at it, and apparently, according to the cashier, it was annoying because it rejects about 90% of signatures. Really? Where yeah. was this? Uh, some grocery store in Yonkers. Oh, they must have a weird new thing at that grocery store. Well, I think they tried to up security. I think they enabled some sort of secure bit. Oh, they should turn that secure bit off. Off, off, off. Anyway, yeah, so here's a video of the track editor in Diddy Kong Racing DS. So you can see if you think it's cool. And, you know, if you're someone who was playing Mario Kart DS and maybe you're done with it or, you know, it's gone out of style, Diddy Kong Racing DS, I guarantee at all the conventions this year, this is going to get some mad wireless multiplayer action. It so you better. Might, you might want to get yourself a copy. Well, considering a DS is being sold every 60 seconds in the U.S. currently. Yeah, yeah. Things of the day. So we all love Mortal Kombat. <laughs> what? Well, I don't know about you, but I, I only really like Mortal Kombat 2. Mortal Kombat 1 is sometimes fun, but it's not very good. Well, Mortal Kombat 1 was a was a good game only from the perspective of a 13-year-old boy. Yeah, and Mortal Kombat's with numbers greater than 2 are just painful. I mean... Yeah, God. But at this least, is a 3D Mortal Kombat. No one I played it. I do remember when Mortal Kombat 3, the arcade game, came out, which was pretty much right at the like the ass end of the arcade era. Yeah, I mean, Mortal Kombat 2, you know, well, even Mortal Kombat 1 had what they call as the, uh, the, the palette uh, swaps or whatever, yep. where it's the same character, just a different color. Oh, Scorpion. Uh, sm- or, uh, Scorp- yeah, and smoke. Mortal Kombat 2 took it a little bit further. They had... Sub-Zero. Yeah. But Mortal Kombat 3, you think they would have learned their lesson? No. They went even crazier, <laughs> and there were just all these characters that were the same exact thing with a different color. So what, a rainbow coalition of scorpions? So they, so they were different. They had these spiky predator masks. I don't know who they were. But really, I do remember that when I went to my old arcade tilt when I was a kid, Mortal Kombat 3 was the hot, hot, hot game, and there'd be this crazy crowd of people around it really? all the time. You could never play because it, it was the that was like the hot game, and people where would... I was, Mortal Kombat 3 was never the hot game. It was Mortal Kombat 2 was the hot game, and people would line up, and one guy who knew to do how to do some combos would stand there for a long time playing for free on everyone else's money. Well, the arcade always had like the newest, newest game to come out. And a million super, super old games that were actually also for sale. Uh, yeah, before arcades died, you know, when, like, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo was a new game, and when Mortal Kombat 2 was a new game, the arcade was hopping, really hopping, like, crazily. The one in the mall, they always had the greatest new games. It was crazy. Hey, at least we got Wildwood. The, the arcades there on the boardwalk are more hopping than any other arcades I've ever been to. Uh, Dave and Buster's is and Jillian's and places are kind of hopping. Jillian's aren't hopping. No, it depends. Jillian's are lame. It depends on which one you go to, but if you go there at the right times, there are people there. Yeah. yeah. Not like the boardwalk. No. It's a different crowd. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we also love Street Fighter 2. And street all the Street Fighters, except Street Fighter 1. Yeah, Street Fighter 1 
is good for looking back on, but you don't want to play that game. There's nothing to it. You realize when Street Fighter 2 came out, I'd never heard of or even known that a Street Fighter 1 had existed. Well, I knew that 1 must have existed, but I never played it. No. And then I played it once. I thought it was like Goonies 2, where there, was, there wasn't there was really a Goonies 1. I mean, there was in the arcade, and there might have been one for the NES, but no one had ever played it. Goonies 2 came out, and that was the first Goonies game, as far as anyone knew. Yeah, I, went, I actually played Street Fighter 1 once in an arcade. Uh, it was the version where there's just one button, you know, and you... Depending on how hard you push the button, it's either light or hard, kicking and punching. And it, it's not fun. It's a bad game. Well, uh, what if you were to combine these two and say, have Scorpion fight Ryu? Well, everyone's always wanted that, but, you know, because those are the only two fighting game franchises we can't combine, all we have is Capcom versus SNK and Marvel versus Capcom and stuff like that. Well, not only did someone make a video that does it very well, but they made this video... Uh, cinematic quality. Really? This is an epic knockdown, drag them out, right out of they live, fight to the bitter end between Ryu and Scorpion. And I gotta say, it's actually pretty cool, and I'd recommend you watch it. Uh, I'm not gonna ruin who wins, but it plays out like any fighting scene in any movie you've ever seen, where one guy's getting the crap kicked out of him, but then the tide turns and the other guy's getting the crap kicked out of him, and then it comes down to the bitter wire, and they both have almost and they, no you know, help. They start left. off using the wussy punches, and then by the end, they're just using all special moves and fireball, fireball, fireball. Oh, there's this one part where Ryu throws like a Hadouken at an angle from the from while he's in the air, then he drops down and throws another one in slow motion, and it, it's really cool. Yeah, it's good stuff. You can actually do that in some of the newer Street Fighters. Yeah, see, even then. Don't ask me how. He was doing stuff that I'd never seen Ryu do. I, I know how to do a spinny kick and an uppercut and a Hadouken. That's, uh, that's those are his basic three moves. <laughs> anyway, so you, you play board games, and doesn't it kind of suck when board games take too long? That is the primary reason I don't go to Maws on a regular basis. Yeah. Well, what if you played a board game for five hours? Would that suck? I'd kill myself. What if it was ten hours? Uh, I'm already dead, so I guess I'd rot some. What if it was 42 hours and 48 minutes? Such a thing could never be. Well, to win, well, I guess winning is not really a prize, but to qualify for entry into the Guinness Book of World Records for longest board game ever played, longest board game marathon, these German guys, uh, there are four of them, they played Carcassonne for 42 hours and 48 minutes. I don't know what expansions they had or what combination of expansions they had, but they definitely had... There's no way, when you look at the pictures of how big this board is at the end, there's no way that they could have done it with just one set. They definitely had multiple sets. There's no other explanation for it. But I don't know how many meeples they had each. Like, did they modify that? Because eventually you're just going to lay them all out as farmers, or you just have to farm basically never. Because you know that eventually there's going to be a bigger farm somewhere. So you just wait for it, and eventually you'll put a guy in it. See, now and it's not worth it for anyone to put two guys into it, because they can always put two guys into two other farms that no one else can compete with. You know what I would have done if I was there in this game? Mm -hmm. Every tile I got, I would have put on one side of the board in a long chain just to fuck it Ooh, up. Ooh, that's if you can. You might have to do like two separate chains just so that you'll always be Oh yeah, able to but I would one just pick other. one side and whenever possible build as far as I can toward one player who is annoying me. Ooh. I've done that good. before in other games at Carcassonne if I'm winning or something. I'll just start building towards Scott just to make him shift back a little. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good move, but no, they they made a giant Carcassonne board and they played Carcassonne for 42 hours and 48 minutes. You know, normally if someone doesn't take their turn, we get a little across. If I was playing that le that level of board game and someone didn't make their turn in, I don't know, three seconds, I'd probably just kill him. Yeah, I really want to know what the requirements were for this to qualify as the Guinness. I mean, what if I took one turn and then Rim took an hour on his turn? We yeah. Could, we could, does that count? I mean, we're still playing, just Rim... You know, didn't take his turn. Yeah, we're yet. playing chess. We've been playing chess for the last 10 years. And Carcassonne is a game that can theoretically go on forever. I mean, you know, did they just figure out, like, how many tiles per minute and then start with that many tiles in order to make the record time? Or did they just keep adding tiles to the game when they, re you know, 
I don't know. Well, it's your thing of the day, so the uh, onus is it on doesn't, you. It doesn't say anything, and I Great. can't find any information, and if there is information, it's in German, so it's not helping me out. Oh, well, at least we just played a normal, sane game of Carcassonne. I did, a little while I, ago. I thought I was going to win, but you built two giant castles. One of them had the cloister. Not the cloister, the uh, cathedral. Yeah, uh, the suicide bit. Yeah. See, yeah. I well, I always win Carcassonne, <laughs> but usually I do it with farming. But this time, because we're playing with three people, and it's not like playing with a bunch of our other friends who, well, I mean, they're smart people. They just don't play board games as much as we do. I was playing against Scott and Alex, who are pretty much the people who, if anyone's going to beat me at this game, it's one of them. I wonder, see, I think the pro the only reason I lost is because you jumped into my farm at the last second when I had no time to possibly defend it further. That was my plan. I know, I, you, I realized that later. You put that big farmer in, and I thought, wow, that's the only farm in the game that's worth a goddamn. I'll just jump in at the end and tie him. See, actually, that's what I did through the whole game. I also tied Scott on a big city, and I tied Alex on a big city. And I just king made back and forth, back and forth, taking points for me, points for them, one for you, one for me. And then in the end, I'd done that more times than anyone else. Yeah, I had thought about putting another farmer in that uh, farm for a while. I should have done it. If I had, I probably would have won, but oh well. Carcassonne, crazy giant. If you want to see the biggest set of tiles you've ever seen... Check Good this out. It's pretty crazy. But I know you've all been waiting for us to talk about not a board game, but a video game, because we know that WarioWare Smooth Moves is out, and everyone has had a chance to play it. At least everyone cool. And, uh, in a word, underwhelmed. Well, I think it's, uh, it's definitely better than most of the other Wario games. I don't know. I think... On a raw scale, the GameCube WarioWare is the best WarioWare ever made. Well, the thing you got to understand, right? There's what? There's four Wario games that WarioWare games. WarioWare are. touched, twisted the Wii one. Right. The the GameCube WarioWare is sort of this odd game in that it's the same exact game as the original WarioWare for the Game Boy Advance. It's the exact same game. Only, they added a little bit of multiplayer. A little bit? They actually added quite a bit of multiplayer. Well, they added, let's see, what, there's like nine, ten little multiplayer games on there? Something like that? Yeah. All right. And they added a bunch of little multiplayer games, and they ported it over to the GameCube instead of the Game Boy Advance. Yes, thus transforming WarioWare from, in my opinion, a worthless game into one of the greatest party multiplayer games ever made. Well... You know, the thing about the original WarioWare is it's meant to be sort of like a... Crap. You, know, you can play... No, it's not crap. It's crap. It's I'm, I'm, I'm going to come out and say it. That game is worthless. I think it's only worthless to you because the situation in which that game is played does not exist for you. Oh, you mean you have time to kill and you're bored, so you just want to play a mindless nothing game? Yeah, it's like, hey, I got five minutes to do nothing. I'll play a little bit of WarioWare. It's quick. It's fun. You know, it's not too hard. You can turn it on, turn it off without caring. There's no, you know, it's not a game you got to play for a long time or think a lot about. You just, you know, move your hands around and think a little bit. Yeah, but even if that is, I mean, people are free to like that sort of thing, but that doesn't really, it doesn't make it a good game overall. It just makes it a game that fills a very specific niche. Yeah. Well, it is fun, you know, to, especially if when there's ever, there's new games in it, that's what makes it fun. It's like... You know, if it's new WarioWare, it's fun. If it's the same old games, mini games or micro games, whatever you want to call them, if you've played the micro games before, like, okay, I've threaded the needle 10 times in my life, it's not fun to thread the needle anymore, you know? So WarioWare games tend to get played out very quickly. See, but that's the beauty of the GameCube one. It never got played out because no matter what, if you sit down, adding multiplayer to something so simple and adding it as elegantly as they did makes it just basically an infinitely replayable party game. Mm -hmm. I mean, the intensity of our WarioWare matches rivals even our Mario parties. I must agree. You know, I'm, I'm not arguing against you on this that, you know, of course, WarioWare multiplayer is the shit awesome. And, you know, all I want is, is tons and tons of WarioWare multiplayer for the ultimate hotness. But there is merit to the single-player WarioWare, even if it has no place in the life of Rim. Yeah, I guess my problem is that the GameCube WarioWare was an amazing game, and in a way, in many ways, it changed the way we play games as a group. Our the front row crew, WarioWare became this party game that just got whipped out constantly. Yeah, I think the real advantage it has over something like Mario Party, right? Mario Party was a great party game, except all you really wanted to do was play mini games with people. You know, you wanted to play your dungeon duos and your dominations and your uh, can cans and everything. 
but there was such this long periods of not doing anything and watching animations between those mini games that it sort and it took an hour. It's like, oh god, WarioWare, you've got the same multiplayer mini game action, but it takes like five minutes and it's really fast paced and you play a lot of mini games and you get all the fun of a whole Mario party and that takes an hour squished into like five minutes. And that's, you know, the multiplayer is freaking awesome. Yeah, well, there's different philosophies. I mean, Mario Party is definitely a, we're going to sit down, socialize, yell, have fun, and interact for an hour around Mario Party. WarioWare is, we are playing WarioWare with each other. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Anyway. But yeah. Uh, WarioWare Smooth Moves is the latest installment. You know, we had, uh, we already talked about what the other WarioWare is. Yeah. Were. Now, basically, if you've played WarioWare Touch for the DS... This is the exact same game, only it uses the Wiimote instead of using the stylus. I mean, the minigames are different, obviously, but in terms of the way you unlock things, the kinds of things you can unlock, the kinds of modes you can play in, the games are 90% identical. Yeah, of course it has, you know, a different set of games, but that's about it. Yeah, I mean, the characters are mostly the same. They added a couple characters. They took some characters from Touch that weren't in the other Warios. Yep. Some characters that you've seen before aren't around anymore. But it's basically the game of play a small subset of these micro games. If you beat enough of them, it unlocks another subset of the micro games. And eventually you'll unlock all of them along with a bunch of chinchy, chintzy extras that really don't take you anywhere. Yeah. And it's like, you know, the single player would be a lot cooler if there was you could beat it in, you know... If it took more than a day to beat it. I mean, I literally sat down, started playing, and the only reason I didn't beat it in one day is because I just didn't want to. I, it would have taken me literally. Like, I played it for the first day, and I just beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it. Hell, we got the game. We put it in. I end up playing a little bit. I beat half the game in, like, 20 minutes. Yeah. Now, there are, you know, even if you beat the game, in quotes, and unlock everything in the whole single-player mode, and then unlock everything in the multiplayer mode, there is still some micro games that you are still not available, and you have to play the single player, you know, it's, it's the correct modes on the single player enough to get those mini micro games to appear. So that kind of makes you play the single player enough so you can get all the games to show up. Now, well, I'll put aside the multiplayer for a bit and look at just the actual gameplay because there are two really important things about WarioWare. One is that you know you can play it with the Wii Mote. And this is really the first game to show off in full glory how the Wiimote works. Because WarioWare Smooth Moves is excellent from a gameplay perspective. Yeah, I mean, if you think about the way Monkey Ball minigames use the Wiimote, which is, which is not at all. 180 degrees. It's 180 degrees. The Wiimote actually works in WarioWare. WarioWare is as good as Monkey Ball is bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, basically what happens is the game teaches you these stances, right? And the first one is the remote control. And the guy, you know, it's pretty cool when they introduce a new stance. A guy always comes out and says something like, Like a cool breeze on a summer's night, so too will you understand the blah, blah, blah. Yep, yep. And he teaches you a new stance. So the remote control stance, you hold the Wiimote like a remote control. And if when is it, when you're about to play a micro game, any micro game... The game tells you which stance you should be in. So it might say, okay, for this game, get ready. Hold it like a remote control. And you hold it like a remote control. And then the game starts. Now, just because you're holding it like a remote control doesn't mean you're going to be moving it the same way. Some remote control games require pointing. Some require moving it left and right, up and down, pushing a button, not pushing the button. You know, so it can often be deceiving. You know, you're holding it like a remote control. You expect to move it in a certain way. And then, nope, you actually had to move it in a different way. Yeah, that tripped me up on a couple of mini games. Yeah, there was the one, the flip one, where it gives you like a, a, a pancake on a spatula, and I keep trying to flip it up in the air. But no, you're supposed to rotate and just flip it down onto the pan. And I go, ah, oh, I messed it up so many times. I just flipped the pancake onto the wall. Now, there are a lot of forms. I can't tell you how many there were offhand, but I mean, there's the mohawk where you hold it over your head. My favorite is probably the big cheese, where you hold it at your hip and you stand there laughing like a CEO. I don't know. I really kind of like the uh, the sketch artist one and the thumb wrestler one. Ah, the thumb wrestler, not used very often, but used to great effect. Yeah. The uh, oh, I also like the the driving one, the courier. Yeah. yeah. Or actually, there's one of the boss stages because you know all these WarioWare games they have boss stages, which are if the games are micro games, the boss stages are essentially mini games. Yep. 
and one well, of them... Well, they're really just micro games that last more than five seconds. They last maybe 30 seconds or yeah, a minute. Yeah. But there's one where you just drive a car through the woods, and the way you control the car gave me such a hard-on for a Wii racing game other than Excite Truck, like a straight-up yeah, racing game. It actually, game. that boss stage controls the driving better than Excite Truck does. It's pretty crazy. It's really great. Like, you're just driving casually through the woods on a, on a normal road in a normal car, and the Wii Mote makes an amazing steering wheel that's, like, perfect in every way in this little Wario boss game. Oh, the other great boss stage is the uh, Star Fox one. Yeah. Oh, I want a Star Fox game. And not some sort of weird adventure around and collect the doodads Star well, Fox. Well, there was a GameCube one and a DS one. But Whatever. Yeah. Those are all... Using a Wiimote to control any sort of free space shooter is going to usher in a new era. I look forward. I, my speculation here is that, you know, they're talking about a Star Wars game, lightsaber control. Well, this could be Rogue Squadron Reen, no doubt. Yeah, any kind of free pay, free space shooter. Oh, no, Rogue Squadron isn't really a free space. Oh, shooter, oh that's why I said specifically free space yeah. shooter, and I just kind of ignored. I Rogue might, Squadron. I might get Rogue Squadron Reen anyway. Who knows? Scott Johnson will get it. Yeah, oh, that's true. That's true. We'll just have to wait until it's twenty bucks. Yep, that's right. Yeah, it's about worth twenty bucks. It's not definitely not worth fifty, yeah. unless there's a super a supreme drought of games. <laughs> But, anyway, but the the L, I mean, when they first announced WarioWare for the Wii, which we knew was gonna come, I and mean, you couldn't not make a WarioWare. And yeah, we knew we were gonna buy it. But I wondered how are they gonna handle the Wii mode? Because you could deal with it in any sort of way. And I think this form idea, and also the way they prevent present it. Yeah, imagine if the mini ga- the micro games are just like okay, thread the needle. Well, what do you do? Do I hold the Wii mode like this and move it to the left? Do I? You know, hold the Wiimote like this and move it that way, it would be impossible. But also, they iconify all of them into very easy to reference, very quick pictures that not only are a picture of you holding it correctly, but the name will remind you anyway. So they kind of flash it like, do the Mohawk, and then the mini game starts. And the timing is just absolutely perfect. You have exactly enough time to put the Wiimote in whatever configuration and go. Unless you're playing, what's the mode? The thrilling mode, where it doesn't tell you the stance, and you have to figure out, you have to remember the stance because you already did the game before. Yeah, now I'll actually note that after having played most of the game, that mode is no different than any other mode. Yeah, today. if you've played enough of the WarioWare, you know the stances for most of the games. It, the only time it'll trick you is if it's a game you haven't played before. And I don't think that mode gives you games you haven't played before. Well, it does me, because you unlocked some games that I hadn't seen while I wasn't home. Oh! I went to play it, and this guy appears on a pull rope, and I don't know what's going on. And <laughs> That's a good one, yeah. It is a good one. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, the control is absolutely superb. The mini games aren't actually as crazy as the games from WarioWare and the GameCube. That is true, is that the uh, in the other WarioWare games, maybe not so much touched, but the Twisted and the original WarioWare, the themes of the micro games are sort of way out there and wacky. Sort of I like mean, in a chromati kind of way. I mean, there's the anime girl with a, a booger coming out of her nose that comes down and snatches your little dude off the ground. Oh, yeah, that one. Wow. Or probably the most... Or there was, like, you know, the human-looking Koopa and Mario that fight. You know, it, it all sort of had this kind of air of, you know, kind of weird Japanese grungy styling to yep. it. Also, perhaps the most disturbing game, which I would basically call it the rape metaphor. Which game was that? Where... It shows a nose in the middle of the screen, and there's four players with fingers pointed at it. And then text appears, and the text is a single word that says, insert. Oh, yeah, that one. And then it spins around while you try to shove your finger into the nose before someone else does. Yeah, yeah. or the the capitalism game. (laughs) Capitalism must crush capitalism. Yeah, the games in this WarioWare tend to have a, a lot more broad appeal in their theme. However, it's like everyone can kind of relate to the games and the style, the visual style of the games more easily. Because this was a WarioWare that was made for the Wii, as opposed to taking Game Boy games and putting them in a container on a GameCube, the games are extremely beautiful, or extremely ugly on purpose. But the animations and everything in the game is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, everything actually looks really shi- you know, bright, shiny, lots of nice colors, you know, it, it, it's... 
as quality as like a cartoon you would watch on TV. Yep, the music's really good. Oh, the, the music is so awesome. Like when I'm standing there in between mini games, I cannot help but dance. It is actually impossible to not dance. No matter what level you're doing, there's always, you know, the little music between the mini games. And you just dance. Oh, hell, the opening song after It's a Wii, a Wario, is just fantastic. I could disco dance to that all night long. You know, when I'm playing the disco stage with uh, Jimmy T. Or I, Jimmy P. Yeah, I, I, I just dance the whole time. I can't stop. <laughs> I, and actually, I, for, when Jimmy has his cats and they do the thriller dance with him, I... Well, it's not the thriller dance, but well, it, it's a dance. It alludes to the thriller dance very it does. openly. It does. <laughs> Yeah. I guess it's more like Funky Cat, maybe. All of the, uh, you know, because whenever you're about to play a new stage in the single player, there's the pre-stage video, you know, a little FMV that tells the plot, and yeah. then, in quotes, and then there's a little video after you beat the stage that shows you the resolution of that plot. Yeah, and this they're, is... they're all really good. Like, well, usually they're kind of eh, or they don't, you know, I think of the original Warrior where they didn't even really exist. But now they're they're all there and they're all kind of awesome. You know, you want to see what happens. My favorite one is still Ashley. Eh, I th think Jimmy P is always gonna be the best, seconded by Mona. No, Ashley is great. Just I mean, it's a run of the mill, whatever. But at the very end, when she uh, succeeds in doing the thing, and then it cuts to her face, and then she does that tiny little smirk. Yeah, yeah, it's that fun. was great. It's good. It's good. Still Even though they didn't have her funny song from the uh, DS game. No, the DS game uh, Ashley has a funny song, and in the Wii game she doesn't. But yeah, if we're talking about the single player, just WarioWare as a single player game, or even as a single player pass the controller around who can get the high score, who can unlock things game, A+. Plus. Yep. It's wonderfully executed. There is not a single mini game, micro game that doesn't work. They all function. Well, one of them I thought didn't work, but if you ever think it doesn't work, it's actually because you don't know how the hell to do it. Yeah, luckily they have the Temple of Form where you can go in and play any one mini game on all three. Well, yeah, micro so games. like if you're playing and a new mini game comes up, a micro game, and you can't beat it, you just go, "What the hell am I supposed to do?" You can go to the Temple of Form, select it, and just keep playing it over and over again until keep you figure playing. out how it works. Keep playing, and that's pretty cool. It's also pretty cool because if there's a game that you like and it only showed up once and, you, and it never gets to show up, you can go and play it on purpose. Yep, you I've can done also that. see how many games you have yet to unlock. Sadly, we don't have so many more. Yeah, well, there are, there are like three or four per stage we don't have so far. Now, if they had had even half the multiplayer experience that the GameCube WarioWare had, I would have rated this game the best multiplayer game currently available for the Wii, possibly going to be one of the greatest of all time for the Wii. Yeah, I mean, it has the multiplayer is average oh, it's, it's kind of it, eh. it's so underwhelming don't we can't even i can't mitigate this with well but it's i mean at least at shite. least the only thing i can say about the multiplayer is it's there it, it works see it, it seems and scott mentioned this when we were playing the game that we expected the gamecube game which was great and i have a feeling and well scott brought this up first that the Nintendo and the people who designed WarioWare didn't realize that the multiplayer aspects of the GameCube one is what made it so amazing for so many people. Yeah, I, I just think, you know, think about all the WarioWare games they've come out with. The original Game Boy one, completely a single-player experience. Uh, Twisted, single-player experience. Touched, a single-player experience entirely, right? The GameCube one was just an odd game out that they just ported to the GameCube for the, the sake of it. I don't even know why they did that. May I... You know, it was a Game Boy game. But it I guess up... they just needed a WarioWare game on the GameCube so that they could cover all the systems. Yeah. So they just ported the original one, I guess. It also, you know, you could use the Game Boy to play it with the link cable. I should look at the credits and see who's uh, lacking or who's different between all these games. Yeah. So when they came out the Wii one, why, you know, of course there had to be multiplayer. It would have been completely stupid to just not have any. But... You know, to put the most effort into that, what well, was primarily a series of single-player games, I guess they just didn't realize that, you know, the multiplayer is what everyone really wanted. So, the multiplayer has a number of the modes. The thing is, though, is, like, when you watch the ads for WarioWare, they always show, like, a whole bunch of people enjoying it together. You know? It seems like, well, it, if you really look, it looks like the way this game is designed, because when you're playing even the single-player between sets of, like, 20 It'll tell you, it'll give you a pose, and there's a lot of poses in the game. It'll be like, pose like this, and it doesn't score you, it doesn't know if you do it or not. It seems like the game is designed 
with Japanese sensibilities for one person's just playing and everyone else is being entertained by watching them play. Yeah, I mean, if you're normal, non-geeky people and you actually do what this game tells, like if you get normal people to play this and normal people to sit around, it'll probably entertain the hell out of them because they're like, oh my God, look, someone's doing something silly, lol. But for geeks, it's like, no, we all need to play this at the same time. We take it completely seriously, and we're going to see who's the best at it, goddammit. Now, even if it only had Round Robin, which it does, because if you look at the GameCube one, a lot of people were saying, oh, it doesn't have simultaneous multiplayer, that's shite. But if you look at the GameCube one, there was almost no multiplayer simultaneous action. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, the even in the disco game, right, which is the most simultaneous game for the multiplayer for... Uh, multiplayer option on the GameCube WarioWare? No, it wasn't. The most multiplayer one was the Turtles because it had the four-player game between every set. I guess, I guess. But even so, most of the time, you know, it was one person play a game. If they win, they get ahead. If they lose, they fall behind. And then, you know, there would be some interlude that involved four people. The disco game was usually you play a game. Now you play a game. Now you play a game. All right, now everyone play a game. Now just you play a game. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of everyone playing at the same time. But the, the way they did that, where at least one, everyone has their own controller. You're mm-hmm. sitting there with your controller. And while they weren't a huge part of it, like they were interspersed within other games, the four player games that they had in the GameCube one were for the most part fantastic or at least silly enough to still be fantastic. Yep. And the fact that there was periodic multiplayer and it, it weren't round robin passing it around and everything meshed so well made it great. Not only is there no simultaneous multiplayer at all, zero, in WarioWare Smooth Moves, but you can't even use more than one Wiimote ever. Yep. If you're playing, you know, let's say the Angel game, which is just round robin, everyone plays a game one at a time. If you lose, you're out. If you win, you stay in. You have to pass the Wii mote to whoever's turn it is, and they only get. And it, not only that, but they only give you so much time to do it. Nope. If you're actually playing with twelve, I'd like to actually try to play this with twelve people in one room. Oh, we How would you pass the Wii mote to the right person every time? I mean, and what if I'm trying to beat, say, Rim? If I if I just played a game and now it's Rim's turn, I'll just hold on to the Wii mote and hand it off to him late, and he'll die. See again, Japanese sensibilities. The this game does not have asshole safeguards in it. Nope. It's, it's not, you know, the I multiplayer mean, is not constructed to be an actual competition of who knows these micro games and who can do well at them. It's constructed to just be, let's all look silly playing micro games, and it's not really a game. Now, it's granted. Just, let's, the Wii tells people to do silly things, and everyone laughs. Granted, you don't need the asshole protection if you actually have friends who aren't just horrible people. Yeah, so I mean, I might do that us. once, but I'm not going to do that most of the time. Yeah, or not if we're having a semi-serious game. Yeah. But the fact that you have to pass the Wiimote. Now, this would be fine normally. All right, I just pass the Wiimote. Not only does the game tell you to use the strap, yeah, like every it's game, so contradictory. Use the wrist strap, but you didn't give me enough time to take the wrist strap off, pass it, and have someone else put the wrist strap no, on that'd be okay. before the game starts. That'd be okay. That's just, you know, Nintendo covering their butt. There is one micro game, one, where you have to just let go of the Wiimote and let it fall on the wrist strap. You can't win it if you don't have the wrist strap on, but you can't play multiplayer with the wrist strap, and yes, that game is in the multiplayer. Yes, I've managed to cheat that game a couple times by when not wearing the wrist strap, by just dropping the Wiimote and then catching it, like a foot lower. Yeah. Or by, I would play... I would have a Wiimote with the wrist strap on it, but I wouldn't be wearing the wrist strap. I would drop the Wiimote, I'd let go, and then I'd grab the wrist strap with my fist, and then it would yank on the Wiimote, and I'd win that game. But it's totally hit or miss. It is totally hit or miss. There's no way I can guarantee to win that game. How can they reasonably expect you to pass a Wiimote and apply the wrist strap properly? It's Plus, just insane. They missed out on so many opportunities. They have this telephone game where the phone rings and you pick it up, and it says something in your ear. They could have made games where four Wiimotes and four people hear four different things. Or, you know, say there's like ten different color... Or who can pick up the phone the fastest. Yeah, there was so much potential that they missed out on. Now, that alone would not have failed the multiplayer. Because the passing around works okay. And playing the bomb game or the angel game... It's not that big a deal to pass the Wiimote around... Other than losing the fun psychological factor and losing the simultaneous multiplayer. Mm -hmm. On top of all that, aside from the fact that most of the multiplayer modes are utter shite. Yeah. 
I mean, the only two multiplayer modes that are worth playing more than a couple times are the angel mode, which is just round robin survival, and the bomb mode, which is you get to choose which form the next person is going to have to do. So I can say, aha, Rim, let's see you do a mortar and pestle game. And then Rim goes, I did it. Let's see you do uh, a remote control game, et cetera, et cetera. And now, when someone loses, they're out. Yeah, every multiplayer mode is single elimination. Yep. Which really ruins a lot of the fun. I mean, the disco mode in the original, uh, the GameCube one, was three times losing. So that if you play multiplayer, it's like you play, you play, you play, someone loses, it's over. Well, the running one is not single elimination, but that one's crap anyway. Yeah, the running one was really cool up until you end it, and then it goes to the like the second half of the running game, which is 100% random, mitigated slightly by your score from the previous one. It's just nothing. Yep. It's, but, it's pretty bad. So the only two games were the crap are the Angel game and the Bomb game. The darts are pretty bad. You play them once, you oh, figure it out. I, this is sad. While Monkey Ball for the Wii is one of the worst games I've ever paid money for, mm -hmm. and while I'd throw it away if it weren't for the fact that I want to get some of my money back, <laughs> the darts, the one thing that Monkey Ball did okay, are better than the darts in WarioWare. Yeah, the darts in WarioWare it seems to be like you just aim it, and then you shake the re you just snap the re the Wii mote, you know, quickly and shortly, and then the dart will go right where you aimed, and that's it. Or maybe but, slightly lower than where you aimed. But to bring the expectations and my satisfaction level even lower, let's look at the two ma micro uh, God multiplayer. multiplayer games that work. The bomb game, cool idea. You pat you pick, you know, it tells you who's up next, and you pick what form you want them to have to use. I already said this. And but yeah, and every yeah. time a form is used, it gets harder. Mm -hmm. All right. That's a really cool mechanic. And it con the game constantly gets faster no matter what. You can only use that mechanic in the bomb game. There's no option to use it in any other style of multiplayer. And the only thing the bomb game does is whoever messes up a mini game, they lose, everyone else wins, game's over. Yeah, it's not like, it, let's say there's five people playing the bomb game. One person loses, everyone else wins. Shouldn't it be keep going until everyone blows up except one guy? Now, they do that in the angel game. The angel game is last man standing wins. Great. But you can't do the cool pick the form thing from the bomb game. It's just single elimination with no options. Yep, it gets faster and faster every round, but you can't choose forms or it's just it randomly selects a game that you've played before. Yeah, so while the bomb game would be better, you can never play it with someone who isn't as good as you or else it just ends right away and it's not fun. And what's the other, what's the fourth one, the one on the right? Well, there's the pump it up game that... Oh, yeah, that one doesn't really make sense. I mean... In the, in the old WarioWare, there was a game where you would inflate a balloon, and whoever was playing a, a micro game when the balloon exploded would lose, and that's still the truth in this game. And it was simultaneous. All the other three people could pump up the balloon while they were playing. Yep, so I'd be playing micro games while other three people are pushing A as fast as they can to pump up a balloon. Now, it's like you pump it up, and then I start playing because you hand the Wiimote to me. It's like it, do it's doesn't, it doesn't work out because you can't really tell like okay i just pumped it a whole bunch when does that count you have to calculate like when the pumping you want it to explode you know you might pump it up a whole bunch and then when you get the wemo it'll explode and it kind of sucks the other way where it's simultaneous you know when you want to pump it whenever you can end of story it makes it's a lot more fun yeah and yeah. basically it just comes down to i mean i would give warioware touched for the ds a c plus just because it's a good game very well executed but the lack of multiplayer basically renders it almost worthless, and it has almost no replay value once you've played it through. Yeah, it's it's basically, you know, a lot of the things with the Wii, it's like everything for the Wii is great. Everything that they have made is great, but it's still disappointing all the things they have not made. The Wii is supposed to be a huge party system compared to the 360 and the PS3. Yep, and yet there's no good party game nope, out. No, there isn't a party game out, and they're probably, you know, that ra raving rab as I've heard, but whatever. Well, I'll probably know. just get that because I'm hurting here. Yeah, and it, it, there's, there's no party games. And let's see, what else? The virtual console could be 10,000 times more awesome than it is, but it isn't. There could be a million awesome Wii channels, but there aren't. It's like... Why are they going so slow? They should just open up the can and let people make, you know, all sorts of crazy shit for the Wii and everyone would be happy. I can but tell instead, you why they're they going so slow. they keep holding back and not, you know, taking advantage of the full potential of this amazing system. I can tell you why it's going so slow. One, 
They're selling Wiis faster than they can make them anyway. And mm-hmm. they're selling games in crazy quantities. The Wii is making money hand over fist. It's like they're not interested in doing better than they have to in order to sell stuff. So I imagine the moment Wii sales start slackening, or the moment the uh, release cycle of games starts slowing down, they'll start bit by bit incrementing the level of quality to keep people like us interested. I don't know. We'll see what they do. I mean, the DS is just now really starting to hit its stride. When it first came out, it was the same deal. The DS had so much potential. No, we're about to enter another DS glut, actually. Yeah, but what I think the until, first... Until, like, the end of the year. The first, well, until the Pokemon games come out. The first year of the DS, there was... I mean, it was a good system, but there was so much it could have been doing that it just wasn't. There's still a whole bunch that the DS could be doing that it isn't. Yeah, but bit by bit, it's starting to figure itself out. And I think the DS is going to have a really, really long life cycle. Yeah, it's definitely good. DS is going to hang around for a while, but, you know, it's like when we first got the DS, we were seeing games like, you know, uh, what's it called? The Kirby's uh, Canvas Curse, right? Yeah. You know, and now the stylus is mostly being used for games like Phoenix Wright and uh, Hotel Dusk. Which is fine. Those are the kind of games I want. I like those games, but it's, you know, it's like all the, you know, potential of the DS. It's Wi-Fi and it's stylus and all that stuff, you know. Hotel Dust could have been just doesn't even need the stylus, you know? It's like, come on, people. They're bar- they're not taking the microphone on the DS doesn't get used for shit. <laughs> the uh what else on the DS? The Wi Fi is barely used. I mean Tetris is the last game to make use of the Wi Fi in any reasonable good way. You know? I don't know. It's just sad that these things could be awesome. They have been used in awesome ways, but it doesn't really stick because no one keeps hammering it with the full potential. I think the other problem is that a lot of the people in Nintendo, I mean, they make a game and it sells really well. I don't think they realize that if they'd made the game a little bit better, it would sell so much more. Also, or the peep, you know, the other thing is that they made a game a little bit better. It would not only sell so much more, but the price would stay up for longer on the shelf because people would just keep playing the game for, you know, I mean, WarioWare, I don't see us playing this game of, you know, six. To 12 months from now. It's probably just going to sit there not being played. However, what I do see us doing is playing WarioWare for the GameCube forever. Yep, exactly. And, you know, that's going to sell, you know, copies of WarioWare for the GameCube down the road. So I guess, come on, Nintendo, give us a dev kit. God damn. Yeah, I think that's the real problem that this shit goes down is because Nintendo is just so... You know, they promised, hey, we're going to make it cheaper to make Wii games. And it's true. If you want to develop games for the Wii, you don't need as much money as you would need to develop 360 games or PS3 games because the dev kit is cheap. The thing is, they don't give the dev kit to just anyone with enough money. They they check you out and they they very restrictive in who they give it to and who they don't give it to for, you know, corporate secret intellectual property reasons they don't want you telling well, everyone I think it's also the secret of the Wii dev kit Nintendo is very much I mean even way back back when they used to be sued for antitrust stuff all the time they were very much they wanted to make sure that the games that came out on their systems met their standards of quality and they were and so I, c- afraid, I can understand that well they were so afraid of any non-gamer seeing a bad game and thinking poorly of their console as a result. Well, it was mostly people like coming out with Tengen games and stuff because when you, if you want to make a GameCube game or a DS game or a Xbox game, you have to pay Microsoft or Nintendo or Sony a license for you know your game. That's why the Nintendo seal of quality is there. That's why you know if you're a 360 game, if you want there you to have a game published for the 360 in those little 360 DVD cases that works, you have to pay Microsoft money. And that's how they make most of their money when you sell a video game console. You know, you don't, it's, Microsoft doesn't make enough first party games. You know, they, what, they make Halo. That's about it. You know, all these third parties pay Microsoft money. So if you have people like Tengen just making games for the NES without paying fees to Nintendo, that means that now Nintendo can't make money. So, well, except at least Nintendo also makes a huge profit on the Wii itself and on all the accessories. Yeah. See, Nintendo, I mean, we said this last week, too. Nintendo, they make a lot of great things. And despite the fact that we just spent a while bashing Nintendo, they're far and away doing better than Sony and Microsoft in my book mm. in terms of quality games and potential and yep. everything. But primarily, they want your money. And they'll do anything to get it. And currently, 
they don't have to do all these things that we complain about. They don't have to meet their full potential in order to get your money. I mean, at so least, why should they? Here, think it's of like this. a communist. I don't have to work on the farm. I get paid anyway. Here's what I would have done if I was Nintendo. I would release the current WarioWare as is. Because, look, we bought it. Every gamer bought it. They made hand money over it. Hand over fist. All the people who don't want to buy WarioWare, they're buying Wii's just to play Wii Sports. They're making money off of them. They'll release another Wario game you know, a, a year few years from, from now, now yeah. and it'll have what we want because now we've been burned. We won't buy another WarioWare game. So that's a very optimistic outlook. I am not. I don't know if I'm so optimistic no, it, yet. It's such a cynical optimistic outlook, though. It's like Nintendo conspired to force me to buy a crap Wario yeah, game. Yeah, but I'm talking about the fact that you believe that they're eventually going to meet the full potential. I'm 50-50. I oh, think oh that not, there's not a- the full potential. I think they're going to release a WarioWare in a year or two that will have enough more multiplayer to trick us into giving another Wario game a chance. Yeah, my I'm 50-50. I think that they're probably just, they're not going to do any more than they have to to keep selling stuff, you know? All that, they're not going to, you know, if people keep buying virtual console games, they're not going to lower the price. If they don't need to put out, you know, free demos of virtual console games to trick you into buying them out, right out, then they're, they're not going to. You know, if they're not going to put out original content on the virtual console if they don't have to. They're not going to put out more channels if they don't have to. They're going to do only what they have to to, to get money, and they're not going to do anything that has a chance of not being profitable. You know, if they spend a bajillion dollars making a new Wii channel and only 1,000 people get it, they're, they're not going to take a risk on that. I think that's how it's going to go. Oh, well. Yeah. I think we've ranted enough. Yes. So, WarioWare, if you, if you like micro games a lot, if you like, you know, WarioWare Touched and WarioWare Twisted and all that, you'll like this WarioWare. If you, you might like it more. If you like the GameCube WarioWare, stay the hell away from this WarioWare. Yeah, if WarioWare. you're looking for mostly multiplayer and you don't really give a crap about single player, this is not worth the $50 that they're charging for it. It's worth maybe 10 bucks. If yeah, you- wait a long time for it to be used and get it for 10 bucks. Oh, and as a quick little aside here, uh, you might remember that I gave kind of a preview about Castlevania Portrait of Ruin. Mm -hmm. And I was, I mean, it wasn't the greatest game, but I definitely said it was worth getting. Yep. I retract that. This game can die in a goddamn fire. Whoa. What happened there? I almost, upon reaching a certain point in the game, discovering what I had to do in order to be allowed to play the rest of the game... It was horseshit. I almost just took the game out and said, screw it, not worth it, not going to play the rest. Wow. The only game I've done that for ever, other than what I almost did with Portrait of Ruin, was Princess Peach. Nah. <laughs> when, yeah. you know, go, oh, you didn't get all the toads. Better go back. And I just took the game out, and that was the end. Yeah. I don't. I never really do that with games. I mean, you just kind of... Yeah, give up. You have got to I, cast a spell that you can find in a secret area of the game on a specific boss, but the boss has to be in range, and your partner has to cast it, and you can't control your partner while you're casting it, and the spell takes like a minute to cast, and if anything touches her, or she goes too far away from you, or off the screen, or you die, it doesn't work. Wow. Uh, Scott, Scott was actually in the room while I was trying to beat it, and the conversation was basically me going... Fuck! Fuck! And I turned the DS off. I'd reset it. Fuck! Reset. Fuck! Reset. God damn it! Reset. Ugh! Reset. <laughs> For like a half hour. And of course, there's no way to know that you have to do this without looking at a fact online. Yeah, well granted, if you find the secret spell, it's pretty obvious what to do. Oh, okay. Because the spell cures vampirism. Uh-huh. And then you fight a vampire. So, but is finding the secret spell arbitrary? Or is there like hints that say, hey, the secret spell over there? No, there's no hint that there's a secret spell really there's, there's an all the way hint where another guy contracts vampirism and she's like there's probably a spell that could undo this but no hint as to where it would be hidden oh okay and you have to turn into a frog and run into this little corridor and run and you'll find it like hidden in the corner yep I, i'm not gonna start another rant now but 
arbitrary stuff in games pisses me off. It wasn't as arbitrary as the side quests in Crystal Chronicles, which were just so not worth it. No, that was the most arbitrary thing ever. Well, no, the most arbitrary thing ever would be the stuff in Ogre Battle 64. But <laughs> you, you never played that, so you don't know. But I know. Anyway. I know. No, that's why people learn something from the Zelda games. In the Zelda games, nothing is arbitrary. It's all right in your face. Yeah, if you can't figure out a puzzle, the answer is to step back and look, because you're just not mis you're missing something. Yep. In in other games, it's like, yeah, that that perfectly normal looking wall. There's no way you could have known, but if you hit it with this item that you only have one of in the entire game, it'll crumble. And behind it, there's another item that you can use somewhere else to get another secret, which leads you to the secret ending. It's like, you didn't give me a hint. You didn't put a crack in the wall. You didn't have a character say, huh, there's something funny about that wall. If only I had an X to use on the wall. At least, you at didn't... least, if you get past that bullshit in Portrait of Ruin, it looks like the rest of the game is a really good game. Uh-huh, okay. So it's worth it just... Is it worth the full price right now of, what, $30, $35? Eh, it could be. It's, it's not I guess as good. if you really like Castlevania, you should definitely go for yeah, it. Yeah, if you played Castlevania DS and you're just itching for more, go out and buy it. There's no reason not to. Yeah. But if you didn't, if you haven't played Castlevania DS yet, don't even look at this game. Okay, are we done? I think we're done. Okay. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music. Be sure to visit our website at www.frontroadcrew.com where you'll find show notes, links, our awesome forum, a link to our Frapper map, and links to all the RSS feeds. We say feeds plural because Geek Nights airs four nights a week covering four different brands of geekery. Mondays are science and technology. Tuesdays we have video games, board games, and RPGs. Wednesdays are anime, manga, comic nights. And Thursdays are the catch-alls for various rants and tomfoolery. You can send us feedback by email to geeknights at frontrowcrew.com. Or you can send audio feedback via Odeo. Just click the link that says send me an Odeo on the right side of our website. If you like what you hear, you can catch the last 100 episodes in iTunes or in your favorite podcatcher. For the complete archives, visit the website, which has everything. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 2.5 license. This means you can do whatever you want with it, as long as you give us credit, don't make money, and share it in kind. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night.